Shalom and uh, welcome to the Middle East Report. In this programme today we'll be discussing what are the threats, what are the challenges and what are the opportunities facing the Jewish community, Israel and the pro-Israel Christian community. Well, welcome to the program and I have two special guests on the program today and they are friends of the Middle East Report and Revelation TV. They are Sharon Clough from the Campaign for Truth, who's uh, based up in North, uh, North London and together with Alistair Scott, the UK director for Joseph Storehouse uh, based in Sussex. So wel welcome to the program. Um, Sharon, um, it's great to have you back on the programme. It's always a pleasure to have you on the programme. And I admire your courage to fight not only for the Jewish community, but also to fight for Israel as well and, and to hold your ground. So you're doing a great job and, and uh, you're, you're great when you come on the programme. But can you just give our viewers a little bit of an update and some of the things that you've been involved in recently when it comes to Israel and defending the uh, Jewish people? Okay, so um, yeah, um, it's evolving that the latest sort of drive against Jews is to get them to lose their jobs. Um, so I'm currently working with a few people who are under threat um, from uh, people on social media who have devised programs to attack Jews and to report them to their places of work. And because it's a complaint, so the places of work have to take up those threats and so people are brought to panel with advocates and it's a very traumatic time for them. Um, the, the problem is that many of these corporations and businesses actually respond to complaints made on social media. So you'll find them responding to a complaint made on Twitter. So there's a public discussion as well that the places of work are getting involved in. And that can't be right. Um, not necessarily only for Jews, but for any complaint made by somebody that they should get involved with social media. So I'm working mostly on that, trying to help people who are under threat. Um, and because in 2020 I faced such a threat, so I've kind of been through the trauma and the emotions and so on of it. So that's currently what I'm personally doing and using the Campaign for Truth sort of um, devices to to help them. Excellent, that is horrific. And are they, they're being persecuted because of their views on Israel? Or because is they're it? fighting for Israel. And that, because yeah. they're responding to people on social, you know, yes. this battle increasingly takes place on social media. Absolutely. You may have noticed that the big, the big protests are now no longer so big. They've changed, they've become, in the last year, they became drive-throughs. And now very much on social media, which we've watched building, we monitor that, you know that. Um, our own anti-Semitism branch monitors social media. But increasingly they're using social media, they're using, um, uh, it seems to me that they're organised, they're organised from uh, corporations or lawyers. When you look at the language in the, in the complaint letters, it's not the protesters that you see online who are writing those letters. They've got backing from somewhere, so we're looking into that to see who's backing them, who's financing them, where they're operating from. Um, that's really a major problem now. Wow, wow, oh, uh, that's quite quite horrific. Yeah. So we, we stand with you, and, and mm. uh, particularly those uh, Jewish people that are standing up for the truth regarding Israel. And Alistair, it's, it's great to have you on the on the Middle East port. Uh, very faithful and very reliable, <laughs> and uh, a, a, a great a great guy to work with. So appreciate you being on the program today. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Alistair, just share a little bit of update uh, regarding um, your work because you are very mu you are the UK director for Joseph Storehouse. You also do a lot of work for the European Coalition for Israel, and uh, Kingdom Faith as well. Your church in Horsham very very much involved in Israel. So, mm. and you're involved in the persecuted church as well uh, in the Middle East around the world. So you've got many hats. So yes. um, just just give our viewers a little bit of an update on on some of the work that you've been involved in. Well, I think very similar to what, what uh, Sharon's saying. It's it's such an important time. I, I I'm kind of more focused 
on the body of Christ these days. We, we continue our work in Israel, uh, making people aware, but, but actually, at this time of year particularly, you, 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 we, we need to be alert because it's like a holiday period and people get into almost a sleepy mode. Uh, and it's, it's keeping everyone alert to standing with Israel, praying for Israel. Our governments, both in Israel and here, we're in, in a bit, bit of a transitional time because there's a, a, going to be another election uh, in, in, in Israel in, in November and here we're going to have a new Prime Minister. And it's the importance of prayer, I know you have that on your heart, I have that on my heart, is keeping people alert to staying alive in prayer and, and, and getting into the churches where we're being invited and, and, and awakening them about how important it is for us and our, our Jewish brothers and sisters to be taking care of one another, really be, being, being uh, alert of their needs as well, and, 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 and making people aware of the attacks that do come upon Jewish communities, which, which most churches are, are not even aware of. So you've got to go in there, despite everything that's available on media, or not on media so much, but on, on, on the social stuff, um, most people don't know what's going on with the Jewish community and the, and the last couple of two, three years, the, the anti-Semitic attacks, particularly around London, but it's everywhere. I mean, it's, it's happening in Leeds, it's happening in Manchester, it's happening in other places too. So yeah, keeping people aware, keeping people alive to the importance of continuing to be prayerful and encouraging our Jewish brothers and sisters where, wherever we are. I mean, we've, we've, crossed, yeah. we've crossed paths on a couple of things recently in London where uh, we've, there's been a mixture of Christians and Jewish community together and it's been very, very great to be sitting uh, alongside and having conversations which are w with our brothers and encouraging them not to give up. <laughs> no, absolutely. Continue the fight. No, absolutely. Like uh, and, uh, and, and Sharon, it's been a, a very difficult time coming out of uh, this uh, post-COVID mm. uh, world that we're living in. I mean, we're, I mean, you can almost describe the time in which we're living in, uh, you know, the autumn of uh, 2022 as we're approaching it, um, to that of the kind of 1930s. Um, you know, we have social unrest on a scale that we haven't seen since pre-Second World War era. Uh, economically, uh, you know, our, our Western nations are in dire straits. Politically, we have a complete lack of uh, political stability. Um, spiritually, uh, a dark period of, of history that we're going through a very dark period of history. Uh, and there don't seem to be many kind of lights coming on. And at the same time, the other hallmark of that era what was the huge rise in, in Jew hatred that, um, that we actually witnessed in the 1930s across, across Europe and across the world. And, and again, we're seeing the same sort of levels as the 1930s as there is now. Uh, and uh, sadly, we've also seen a bit of an implosion within the Jewish community and the leadership with the, um, with the Zionist Federation, one of the longest campaigning organizations for Israel and the Jewish people who played a major role in helping to prepare for the state of Israel. Has, has run out of money, it's no longer in existence. So, uh, you know, there's, there's leadership uh, issues within the Jewish community as well as problems within the pro-Christian Jewish camp. Um, that uh, a lot of these old people that ran and hosted a lot of the pro-Israel events uh, have, have said this is too much, they're too old after, after COVID and, and many of the venues are packed up. So we're facing immense challenges, aren't we? Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I think in, in, it, in, in history has shown that in any time of crisis where, um, where, where there's, there's war, pending war, political unrest, the Jews are always the people in the pit waiting to be attacked. And that's, we've got all those ingredients, as you say, they're all here right now um, with Jews being attacked on the streets, with uh, Jews being lo losing their jobs. Um, so you, you're absolutely right. And, um, it's, it's a kind of dark time at the moment, I think. Um, and I, I think if we're not very careful, we're going to fall into that same um, sort of repeat of what happened before the last war, when the, the Jewish community itself was split, even then. You had the mainstream Zionists and you had the Zionist revisionists fighting each other not believing each other. You had the, the Zionist revisionists led by Jabotinsky who were warning people. Mm -hmm. I have a little quote here, which I'll just praise you, where Jabotinsky was appealing to the Polish Jewish community in 1938 to be aware of what was happening to them, to leave, to get out of the place. There were three and a half million Jews there. 
and only 10% of them survived. Yeah. So, we, I, and I think we're facing the same thing. I think the, the nature of war has changed. I'm not sure that Jews are going to be killed in the same way, although we now have Israel where they can, Iran can bomb Israel. Yeah. Um, but the attacks on Jews, the diminishing of Jews' ability to function, to earn a living, um, I think I've mentioned it to you before. There was a book written, a diary of a chap called Michael Sebastian before the war, where he describes um, by default, because he wasn't talking about being a Jew, he was assimilated. He describes how Jews were slowly just excluded from society. So they first couldn't buy newspapers, then they had, couldn't have telephones, and then they couldn't do their jobs, and then they had to contribute to the war effort in the most enormous way that was completely beyond anything. So I, I think we're facing that again, and um, sadly the Jewish community again is split. Um, as you say, the Zionist Federation is non-existent. We haven't heard much from the Jewish Leadership Council. I think I got a, a fly of, uh, an email from them for the first time this year. Um, the Board of Deputies is throwing out anybody who disagrees with them. So where are we going to go from there? I don't know. Absolutely. And, and Alistair, I think, um, I mean, you're great with what you do with, uh, with, with Joseph Storehouse and so very, very pleased to share a platform with you uh, back in May. Feels like a long yeah, time ago yes, now. Uh, at the, uh, the Lighthouse Theatre and Pool, which was great. Uh, and um, I mean, that, thanks to the organisers behind that, wanting to organise an event, wanting a night to honour Israel. But I am increasingly coming across places where uh, previously to COVID-19, um, we had I had opportunities to come and speak about Israel and the Middle East and, and sadly those places have, have closed because the people that are running them have either died, um, sadly, and, and tribute goes to uh, Nancy from Nancy's Farm, amazing woman, uh, woman loved yeah. Israel, loved the Jewish people, yeah. loved Holocaust survivors, so sadly she passed away and um, her place where I used to speak twice a year uh, is no longer kind of available. Uh, and of course, then other places as well, her, I know, have closed. Um, and so there's a great danger that we're not, that things have just suddenly slowed down, that the pressures, the economic pressures on life, the increase in the cost of living, mm. the kind of political uncertainty we're living in has meant that the kind of issue of Israel has been put on a back burner. Of course, none of us have been able to visit Israel for over the past two years until, until this year, until recently. Um, so that means it's cut off that connection between Christians and visiting the land of Israel, being in the land of Israel. Uh, and now we find ourselves where a lot of these old people that run a lot of these important mm. pro-Israel events are no longer around or have the strength to organise them and there's a big gap. Uh, this is where others need to step up to the plate and say we need to do our bit to mobilise Christians in support of not only Israel but also our beleaguered Jewish community mm. and our friends like Sharon so they know that they're not alone facing a wave of a tidal wave of anti-semitism and hatred um, and that's why it's so important that we get these events back on the road we get uh, venues back open that we continue to spread Israel's message of love and peace and how Israel's a righteous nation amongst the world and there's a beacon of light and as Christians we have a duty to pay back uh, uh, so much to the Jewish mm. community. Uh, yeah, your thoughts Alistair? It's, it's, it is incredibly challenging. Uh, I, I mean I'm really glad that the kind of pandemic season seems to have come to an end and we can start arranging meetings again in person to person. But you know what, what you're saying is absolutely true. The biggest challenge I think for all of us uh, in the community that understand God's plans for Israel and stand with Israel and, and calling the nations to account as well, there's an age gap. Uh, and, and one of the things we, we are very involved in in our own, in our own Church of Kingdom Faith is a, it, it, there's, a, there's a, a ministry called Israel Next and it's not what's happening next in Israel, it's Israel reaching out to the next generation. Um, uh, because because we see that even um, even in in churches that are strong in so many ways they don't they, the young people don't seem to relate to the roots of their faith uh, and so this Israel Next uh, ministry is all about taking young leaders uh, and and youth leaders and taking them to Israel 
and actually walking through uh, Jerusalem, get, get, get around the, the, the nation and, and get that heart and get that understanding. And of course, teaching them about the, as, as Sharon was saying earlier, it's, they've been persecuted for centuries, since uh, almost the beginning of time. Uh, and and um, getting those reality of the truth into these young people. And then they affect the, the young people in their, uh, in their youth groups and so on. But it is such a difficult challenge because you know as well as I do that the majority of these venues where, where they were more acceptable and understanding of Israel are closing down and the people are getting older and either they are going into retirement or semi-retirement or just not have the energy anymore to, to arrange the meetings. But um, I'm very glad that things are opening up again in London and I know later on this year in October we will have a Feast of Tabernacles in central London again, which will be the first time in three years really. Oh. Um, they're great events, I've enjoyed They're them. great events and we, we have a, a real good balance of uh, people from the Jewish community and, uh, and, and the Christians who understand Israel. But, but, but my challenge and my heart is always, let's get the people who don't, you know, it's not, it's not about sharing this with the choir because the choir understand. We want to get the people who maybe are open but don't have any understanding. And then, then beyond that is actually then to go further. Once you've got the, uh, got the hunger and thirst, then actually start to feed them a little bit more. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Which is which is uh, which is a great. It's both both a problem, but it's also an opportunity. And I know we want to talk about both. Absolutely, those of course. Yeah, yeah, um, definitely. And um, I mean, Sharon, you know, what are the challenges facing uh, young Jewish people? Because I mean, recently we recorded uh, uh, buying the headlines um, dealing with the young Jewish woman, uh, Danielle Grayman, uh, who's a university student at 23, uh, wrote an essay um, defending Israel and exposing the lies and, of the Palestinians and particularly of Hamas using women and children as human shields. And, and uh, she gets marked a fail on her assignment and she fails to get her degree because of it, only because she stood up for the truth and the person marking her paper was, was anti-Israel. So this is completely unacceptable. Mm. Okay, so I know Danielle very well. I'm, oh, I'm her protest mum. Oh, wow. <laughs> so Danielle's mother um, did a great job in instilling in her children um, their Judaic roots and their love for Israel. And so Danielle very often came with me because mum was working. She came with me when we went on protests and so on. And I would look after her and um, saved, saved the scrapes. Mm. <laughs> so I know her very well. And um, yeah, and, and, and I, I read her early dissertations when she was doing her first degree. So uh, this, um, this, this, this dissertation that she did was on how Hamas treats the Palestinians mm. very mm. clearly. And throughout the paper, the, the marker was making comments about, well, what did Israel do? And she was trying to say, well, why Israel? I'm not talking about Israel. Mm. I'm talking about how one group of Arabs in the area treat another group of Arabs in the area. And so this, is, this, this paper was remarked and she passed it. Um, and I believe now she's actually suing the university because she's lost a year of her life. Um, this, is the, this is the effect. When I said losing jobs, this is how they create a situation where even a graduate will not get a job because they've created this uh, scene around them um, that, that discredits their ability to do whatever they're applying to do. Um, but we've seen this coming in the universities for a very long time. Mm. But sadly, um, I think as always happens that they're trailblazers and, and the, the mainstream take a long time to catch mm. on. So, and the Jewish community is no different. So the Board of Deputies, for instance, would never support us. They thought we were rabble rousers and so on when we used to go and combat these talks on, on campus. Um, you may remember University College London, yes, where right. they raided, we, yeah. we ran from room to room and they raided and they jumped mm -hmm. through windows and so on. Um, and it's now got to the stage um, where in education, the people who are teaching are, are racist. I mean, I, I can only call them racist, although they call themselves anti-racist in the modern world, mm. but they are racist. And the problem is I don't think that they recognize racism against Jews as a racism. Mm. They, and, and I think this, this is probably the distinction. And, and, and the racism lies in the fact that when they walk down the street and they see a person of color, they can identify them completely. 
when they see me, they don't really know, am I Spanish, am I Jewish, am I, what am I? They don't know. So because they can't identify me, they don't see somebody stopping me get a job, somebody trying to get me removed from my organisation, my teaching certificate taken away. They don't see that as a racism. They think it's quite all right, you know. So this is what Danielle went through. I'm sorry she went through it, but I'm very proud that she had the strength of character so to we. stand her ground. So we, so Absolutely. we. Absolutely. It's great to I know I can that. say kula kavod to her. <laughs> Definitely. Mm, sure. uh, and, and Alistair, uh, as well, I mean, uh, we, we, we talk about uh, the situation facing the Jewish community here. I mean, we're, we're looking at uh, levels of Jew hatred that we haven't seen since the, the 1930s. Um, uh, you know, we, we've done a program recently back in, um, back in August looking at the plight of uh, uh, Jewish students on campus, the anti-Israel bias on campus, and maybe Sharon should have joined us for that program as well, mm. she'd be perfect. <laughs> um, but, but what I'm saying is that, uh, you know, they, they face really kind of unprecedented threat. They are demonised because of their association with Israel, because of course Israel is the only Jewish state in the world, and that demonisation of Israel seems to be growing stronger. Um, so it's imperative, isn't it, that, that, that Christian watching have a biblical understanding of Israel because that's the foundation yeah. but then show practical love to the Jewish community in Israel to stand up against this tidal wave of hatred and demonization that we're seeing and to actually be lights in this generation because this is what this program is about so I'm also thinking that we also need to change our, our, our strategy we need to change our thinking and it's almost as if we're having to start again after uh, two years of, of shutdown with no events or anything else and losing that contact to uh, get that enthusiasm back, to say that, that we're all on the same boat here, we all have the same heart and that's God's heart for Israel and the Jewish people, but it's time that the Christian community stood up now. Instead of going into a retreat, we need to go on the offensive. Absolutely. I mean, I, I think we must keep our energy level up because, you know, the whole last two and a half years, three years has been quite draining. But, but as you've just said, the, the, we must learn from history because the same things were happening back in the 30s and, and unchallenged then. And, and you know, we, we all use the slogans, uh, never again, and so on. And, and it sounds great, but never again means we have to do something to stop it or to confront it. And confronting, can, you know, most of us don't want to be confrontative. We don't want to be in, in battles, but I, I believe with all my heart, no matter who you are, and you understand the times in which we live, and you see the signs and you're hearing the news, because not everyone knows the news. I I remember speaking to somebody who was very close to our ministry as well, you know, uh, and, and because at one of our meetings we were having in, in London, we had a couple of Jewish ladies come in and, and they were amazing, you know, they, were, they, 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 they wanted to ask questions and then we spent some time talking to them afterwards and they were talking about the anti-Semitic attacks that were happening to them in London, in the London area, not so far from where our studios are. Uh, and. I was talking to the other board members and one of these guys was on our board and, and, and uh, at Joseph Storehouse and he said, oh, surely that doesn't happen in England. You know, we are such a nice, peaceful people. And I thought, th there's a general sort of thinking even amongst Christians, that can't be true. You know, it's almost like you're making up a, or you're exaggerating a, a story. And, but it is the truth. And it's rising not only in Europe, but it's rising in, in the States and rising around the world. And, and every one of us, I believe we're mandated, we're commanded by the Lord to not just sit back and, and allow things to happen, but confront things as they're happening. I believe God's grace will be enough <laughs> to keep us in uh, saying the right things and doing the right things if we're open to do it. Uh, but for any, anyone out there who's watching the program, don't think it's not happening, or maybe it's a little group. It's, it's happening, ra the, it's rising rapidly, and we, are, we have a responsibility to, to make the truth known and actually encourage our, our brothers and sisters. I, I say this in our, our church in, in Horsham, find out in our communities where the Jewish people are and let them know that they're loved and let them know that no matter what happens, we will stand with them. You know, it doesn't matter what's going on around the world or in other parts of Britain, we will stand with them. And that's, that's really a challenge to anyone from any part of the country. Who, if you know of uh, Jewish people around, encourage them bless them and love them, you know, because they need that. Uh, and Sharon, that's, that's why uh, yeah, you're a great friend and that's why I'm, I'm so pleased that you're on the programme uh, and that's one of the reasons why back in 2010 when we, I first started doing this programme, um, the, the plan for this programme was to confront the media bias against mm. Israel. 
um, to create a media alternative that told Israel's narrative, but also to build the friendship between the Christian community and the Jewish community. Uh, and I've been blessed by having so many Jewish and Israeli people that have contributed to this program so that you can have your platform and Israel can have a platform um, to tell your story and to tell your narrative without harassment uh, and to mobilize Christian support in, in love and appreciation for all that the Jewish community have given us, um, for giving us the scriptures, uh, mm. for giving us the Ten Commandments, which is the foundation of, of, of our entire globe, of particularly Western civilization, um, for, for giving us uh, you know, the, the prophets and the word of God, and also our own Messiah, who we follow as well, who was a Jewish rabbi. Um, and of course, then all the disciples as well were all Jewish. So we owe a massive debt of gratitude. Mm to the Jewish people and, and, and the friendship is so important. This is something that's only really occurred in the last 20 years after the second intifada when that wall of petition between our communities was broken down and that's why I'm so pleased you're able to go on, on, on this program uh, and other members of the Jewish community so that we can show you our love for you, appreciation for you and also fight the, the hatred that you face so you don't feel alone. Um, and we, we know from history, and I'm, I'm an historian by background, we know that the evangelical Christian community on the whole, the vast majority of them, failed the Jewish communities across Europe in the 1930s with devastating consequences. Um, but many who stood with the Jewish people ended up going into the same gas chambers as the Jewish people because that was the love that they had for the Jewish people. So we know that we are living in dark, we know we're living in dangerous times, mm. and we know that we're seeing a rise of evil. Um, but on, as far as our watch is concerned, we're not staying silent. Um, and that's why it's imperative that, that we stand with you and your community. Uh, what practical ways can those mm. Christian viewers watching this program today who love Israel and share both mine and Alistair's heart stand with your community and make sure they feel they don't feel alone that they some that we can take some of that pressure off you guys um to know that uh, you're not alone in this battle okay so firstly i want to thank you mm -hmm. um you know how much i respect and love what you do um and appreciate your friendship um and i think what what you do particularly almost stands alone um in the, in this country yeah that you you regularly give a voice to people who don't, wouldn't have a voice um, and that you express how you feel about the Jewish people and the Jewish nation and how we have a Judeo-Christian ethic that it's not ours and it's not yours but it's, uh, it's all of us together. Absolutely. Um, and uh, just to get to the, the other, other point about the support, when you say that the evangelical Christians failed the Jewish people during the Second World War, I think, and it may be true, but I think it takes a lot of courage for somebody who's not in the direct line of fire to stand up and stand in front of that body to, to protect them. It takes a huge courage. And I don't know how many people, whatever they, however devout they are, would say, yes, I will stand up and I'll take the bullet for you. Mm. I'm not sure. It takes huge courage to do that. Um, the, the, the crimes that were committed against Jews in those times, and um, we're looking back to probably the mid-1800s in Europe and mm. further on, um, were horrendous. And perhaps the help that we need is, is an education program, um, not, not, not talking about formal education. For instance, I'm, I came across a book called Gendered Violence, which was about a short gap in Ukraine 1917 to 1922 and about the pogroms. Now people hear the word pogrom, mm. but they don't actually know what no. went on. They don't know the depravity, the, the, the things they did to Jews, to Jewish women, to the psyche of Jewish men, um, how they destroy the people, not, not, not even the killing. I mean, if you kill somebody, you put them out of their misery, mm. but to actually take away their, their Judaism from them, take away their humanity from them. Mm started long before Hitler put numbers on people and put them in the gas chambers. Um, and I think we need to go back and revisit those times um, and get people to read books, to advertise the books that are there, to push them around, to give them to our children. Um, I think this is really, really important. And there's an abundance of them around now. People are writing about it, they're researching it. Um, and I th the, the idea that we talk about the West as being civilized and then you see what went on there. 
Um, and we're seeing it play out again, you know, we're seeing it in Ukraine yeah. and we hopefully won't see it happening in Israel again because I think the Jewish people are now strong. Mm. I think so. I think we can stand up against this. Well, you serve a mighty God anyway, mm. and uh, he's never been defeated in history. So, <laughs> and the Jewish people have outlived every single entire world empire that's ever been on the face of the Absolutely. earth. So, uh, yeah, we, we know you're long term survival. Here. You're still here <laughs> and you still will be. Um, but, but Al <coughs> Alistair, I think, you know, this is quite a, a kind of refreshing program because uh, we're just saying things that, that mm. need to be said in this program okay. today and, and actually sh pointing at the facts of some and maybe the whole. So, what I've also encountered, I think you have encountered as well, I'm increasingly seeing this more and more. Look, I, I love the Christian evangelicals that, that love Israel and they celebrate Israel in their own little ways, mm -hmm. and uh, which I like. But one thing I'm noticing more and more that there's a lot of Israel clubs. So uh, broken down into little factions and little clubs. And this is my little Israel thing. I'm taking ownership of it and stuff as well, which is good. But there has to be a, a coordination of coming together. And, and I think there has to be a coordination of Israel ministries to coordinate as well. Because I, I think effectively, in the if we don't address this problem, in the next five years or next 10 years, mm. uh, Christian Zionists face an existential threat in this country because there's not enough of us. Yeah. Because we haven't prepared the next generation to take up that mantle and to take up this cause. Um, so many churches are too afraid of, of talking about the truth of God's plans of Israel and the Jewish people because they feel that might divide the church. Mm -hmm. uh, and if it divides the church, then the, the funds in the church don't come in. Um, and they think it's a bit controversial uh, or it's too political. Um, and and that's, an, that's an argument I constantly hear that mm. by signing up for Israel, we're getting involved in politics. Exactly. But, but you can't separate the two because Israel is there by God's fulfillment of his word through the likes of Isaiah, Jeremiah, the prophets over 2,000, 3,000 years and now back in the land because God predestined the people mm. to be back in the land. Um, so how important is it that we start coordinating better with different ministries regarding Israel? I know that Love Never Fails put on a, some tremendous events, um, particularly in Parliament to yes. mark the 100th anniversary of the British mandate, the Mandate 100, as well as the Oxford 800, I think, did a program with you on that, yes, Sharon, did, yeah. uh, which are very, very important milestones. But there has to be not only teaching, but there has to be equipping in order to understand the world we're living in and to make a difference and, and take the media battles on, to take the, the message of Israel to the politicians, to the House of Commons, to the House of Lords, to, uh, to our journalists, to our trade unionists, uh, and all those within our sphere of influence. Yeah, but Sharon mentioned it right at the beginning, even within the Jewish community, there's this division. Uh, and, and, you know, that's, that's the enemy's plan, is if he can divide us amongst ourselves, you know, divide and conquer is the old saying. But, but so we've got to find ways of healing those wounds, whatever has caused the separation. And, uh, you know, another thing that uh, Sharon was just talking about, the 1930s leading up to the, the uh, Second World War and the, the whole Holocaust sit situation, is yeah, I think the biggest problem wasn't, uh, it was people were silent. You know, and, 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 you know, one of my favorite scriptures in the Old Testament is Isaiah 62, verse 6 and 7, you know, that we're watchmen on the walls of Jerusalem. I might not be physically on the walls of Jerusalem, but God has mandated us to be a watchman about the Jewish people in Israel, but also in our communities, and to refuse to be silenced. Uh, and, and, and again, as, as Sharon just said, it's quite hard to lift your head up when there's bullets going all around you. But I mean, we, 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 we serve an eternal God. We, we are created for eternity. And you know, if, if I have to lose my life on earth, so what? As long as I'm being led by, by the Lord and doing what is right in his eyes. I don't want to be a man pleaser, I want to be a God pleaser. And I think what pleases God is, is us trying to, as you say, build this community together. It's not us and them. We are one, we believe in the same God. There is only one God of the Old Testament, New Testament. It's the same God. And, and, and I, I want to challenge us all. Let's not be sad. Let's be like Revelation TVR. Let's let's stand up for the things that other people call controversial or political or you know cause division in the church. I think if you don't stand up and you're silent, that will cause more division within the church. But if you stand up for the things that are righteous for God, 
God, God's going to bless us. God's Absolutely. grace is going to be sufficient Absolutely. for us. Yeah. Uh, and Sharon, one thing I, I, I've noticed in particular in, in reflection to God's heart, we, we serve the same God. We serve the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Um, we just have a different uh, a, agreement on uh, disagreement on who mm. the Messiah is. I mm. think that's the, that's the only difference. Um, we believe he's Yeshua HaMashiach, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Um, but you guys are, are not sure yet. But <laughs> leaving theology aside, <laughs> Leaving theology aside, the, the one thing I've noticed more and more, the, the, which really pleases God, uh, and, and this is I've seen his heart, is when Christians and Jews come yeah. together. When uh, we have that representation of our Judeo-Christian heritage, when Christians and Jews can come together to defend Israel, to defend the Jewish people, and also the Jewish community is doing a great job really in standing up for the persecution of Christians, mm. uh, a lot more so than a lot of Christians mm. should be standing up for their fellow oh, Christians yeah. in the Middle East who are suffering an unprecedented persecution because your community has experienced that persecution. You know that persecution. Um, and this is where you see God move powerfully because he wants to show his love to your people that you're not alone. And, and sometimes there's big question marks, and having worked in the Jewish community, I know there are big moral questions such as, who is a Jew, what is a Jew? You know, and it's that call of God that's upon your life and your community's life that you can't get away from it. And the reason is you are so hated amongst the nations is not because you are people full of hate, Mm. It's because you are people full of light and love and you reflect God's glory because your blessing and your calling is upon you. It, it, it's inherent because that's what you've handed out from generations and mm. generations. Uh, and the, the spiritual heritage that you have dating back to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the nation of Israel in the Middle East, and then the, the destruction of the uh, Second Temple in AD 70 being spread throughout the whole world. And this is where your community found itself probably in Eastern Europe and then in South Africa of uh, being the wandering Jew until the nation of Israel uh, was reborn on the 14th of May, 1948, mm. represented uh, an incredible sea change and God's turning his direction to bring his people home back in the land of Israel. And you've got to say that Israel is a miracle today yeah. because there's no way that Israel should actually uh, exist knowing that, that uh, the, what the hostility that Israel faced during its early years, uh, certainly when it's calls for independence. And yet not only does Israel exist in the Middle East, it flourishes in the Middle East. Uh, you've got to see God's hand a blessing on that, don't you? Um. That's a quite a big topic. A long oh, well, no. What is a Jew? <laughs> quite, quite something to answer. Um, there's a lovely book out called um, What is a Jew? I don't know if you saw it, where, um, I forget his name, the, the, the author, he just got tired of Jews being shown as men with black hats on. And so he went around and invited all sorts of Jews to be in his book. I'm hoping his name will come back to me. Um, and uh, it's a fantastic book. There's a page per person, and you'll see people ranging from, from very sort of liberal Jews to religious Jews to Indian Jews, just every kind of person that you, if you put them in a room together, they might, people who walked in might pick out one person as typical of what they might think is a Jew. Mm. Amazing book. Um, can't think of the, the, the author. It'll come back to me. So um, the, the idea of Judaism, um, is, is manifested in, in, in how the Jewish community um, in its broader sense, how Jewish people in a broader sense conduct themselves. Now, I know individually and in little groups you have people behaving like anybody behaves in, in any society. But if you look at the whole sort of output of, of the Jewish people, particularly let's look at what, what let's, say, let's look at Israel as the manifestation of the Jewish people um, who that in, in represents the ethic and the value of Judaism. And it shows what happens when you use those ethics and values to build rather than pull down, to create rather than destroy. Mm. Um, so for instance, there's a, a, f a fabulous video out about the oil industry in Israel, because you know Israel is now a mighty oil yes. and gas, uh, gas producer, mm. um, and how individuals have used this sort of element that's been given to us um, positively. So um, one, of the, one of the things that, that struck me right at the very end was a man who's built sun farms in Israel. Um, now, you know Israel's been using solar, he solar heat for a long time, ever since it was yes. created. 
um, but now they've got these sun farms. And what this man said struck me. He said that um, he's been given this gift um, and this is what he's created and he needs to share it. And he's taken it to Africa and I think it was in Ethiopia, he's built a huge sun farm. And you see the change in the people there, the, the way they're able to build and to grow and for themselves, not being given NGO charity mm. where somebody um, has a bit of spare cash because he earned too much to pay tax in America. Mm. So he, he creates this foundation and goes along to Africa and becomes somebody who does good for other people rather than helping people to realize their own talent mm. and abilities. And for me, this represents what Jews are, um, and not exclusively to Jews, because there are many people in the Christian community who do that as well. Um, some of the people who, who came to Israel to, to exploit this idea mm. of this gift were Christians from the Christian community. Um, so I think in a way that, the, that although they're dark times, and I think the world is in, in a uh, sort of on a, on a precipice at the moment and depending on what the world leaders do depends on how we're going to survive. But I think I see some promise. I see promise, um, particularly in America, because I'm watching um, people who term themselves liberal, liberals and Democrats, part of the Democratic Party. Um, and as we know, the Democratic Party in America has changed. It's now propagating globalism mm -hmm. and and um, the, the Great Reset and all of that stuff. So there are a number of people who have left that fold. And what they do when you ask, what can we do to, to help? It's not just to help the Jewish people, it's to help our world to survive as, as an, a world that can go forward. Um, what they're doing increasingly is creating podcasts. Podcasts where they have discussions online that people can access more than a TV station that you have to know about to get. Mm. If you just drift through YouTube, you'll find hundreds of these podcasts. You and find this program on YouTube as well. And, sorry? You find this program on YouTube. Yes, I know well. you will. I know you will. <laughs> this program, but it's not, not, yeah. not the mainstream. You find the mainstream media there, but they, they're formulaic. Yep, what, what you're seeing in podcasts are, are deep discussions with intellectuals, with politicians, with artists, with creators, um, with religious people. Um, and, and I think this is possibly the way forward to bring the message is to create these podcasts and to no. use social media. Yeah, no, that's, a, that's a very good idea, definitely. Uh, but also social media has that very dark element as well, mm. which is very, very toxic. As you were saying in the beginning mm. of the program, it, it can be very, very toxic, particularly if you take on a narrative that the rest of them don't like or actually oppose. Um, and it does just make me think, Alistair, that, uh, you know, that Israel is a light unto the nations and, and the way that Israel uses her technology to bless other nations is absolutely incredible. Um, you know, I've done programs with MDA and uh, Mag and David Adom, if there's a national crisis where there's an earthquake in Nepal or there's a flooding, uh, we, we, we see that Israelis are, are first on the yeah. scene to respond, um, to show that uh, kind of love and, and humanity for, for mankind, um, which, which, which is amazing. But uh, I think we need to talk about really the, op the, the threats and the challenges and the opportunities uh, facing Israel. We, we know that uh, Israel has emerged as a kind of regional, if not a world power in terms of providing global solutions to global problems, uh, particularly after COVID-19, that Israel is leading the way in terms of information technology and innovation. Uh, and Israel is doing incredibly well as a startup nation as well. So we know that Israel is, is the, having the technology that the West needs, that the Britain and, and Europe needs, but also now with the onset of the coming economic uh, energy crisis that, that Europe's facing this winter, uh, Europe, Israel could also be the solution to energy, as yeah. Europe's energy problems, um, particularly as Russia's cut off the natural gas, which makes Israel's importance and significance even more important. Yeah. Um, but yet yeah, Israel faces an existential threat from Iran and, you know, by the time this program could have gone out, uh, which it is due in early September, the Israelis could have taken out Iran's nuclear facilities or they're about to. So we know that this will change the whole dynamics in the Middle East. It will change Israel's relationship in the world. And if we think that anti-Semitism is bad now, it's going to escalate to levels we haven't seen before. Mm. If Israel decides for her own safety and for the safety of not only the Middle East, but also safety of humanity to take out Iran's nukes, um, then the situation in the Middle East will hot up for sure.
Yeah, I mean, I was reading a report this, earlier this week uh, that Hezbollah are, are boasting that they are now capable, they've got missiles capable of hitting any part of, of Israel from the north right down to the south, the east to the west. Um, Hamas say the same things down from Gaza, uh, and but but you know the the thing about but Israel it 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 it's a miracle. You you know when I, I look, not so long ago, last time I was in Israel and we went into uh, Jaffa and and we, I was looking across at Tel Aviv from there, yeah, from uh, and it's unbelievable. And you think 73 years or whatever it is since ni no 74 years since uh, 1948, this is what you see in a nation that was basically desert, a wasteland, uh, neglected, and, and that's the hand of God on the nation. So, so it has, and it is, the, the solution for, or a potential solution for nations because they willingly, as, as, as Sharon just said, they are willing to, to give their technology to nations that need it. Uh, but, but I think being a solution is also uh, antagonizes uh, the, the enemies. So, I mean, we've seen it in our own last few weeks, the way Russia is coming against and threatening Israel uh, in a big way. And, and they talk about closing down the Jewish agency, aren't they? Yes. Um, so that will make it difficult for the Jewish people within the nation, but even if they want to come out. Um, so, so, so you see the threats. There's Iran, of course, it's so close to the nucle nuclear capability. They are boasting themselves that they have it. They could, they could have the bomb any time now. Uh, you've got the threats coming from, from Syria and the northern border alongside Russia. And then this, there's this alliance going on between Russia, Turkey and, uh, and Iran as well, you know, and, and, it, and they're all aimed towards Israel. So there's a lot of potential solutions and, um, for, for the world, but as a result, there's many nations that are coming against. And then we, we've been talking about it all, already within the nations that are friendly towards Israel, in, in quotes, there's so much anti-Semitism going on and attacks coming on the community. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a dark time, it's a dangerous time, but, but what, what, a, what a miracle Israel is, and, and long may it continue. And, you know... It will continue, we know that biblically. Yeah, we know that for sure. They're going to survive. It's we're we're not going nations. anywhere. Oh, yeah. No, exactly, it's, it's, exactly. The Bible's very clear about Israel and plans for Israel. I'm not sure that it mentions United Kingdom. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> or any other nation. Well, maybe the maybe sons of Tarnish. We, we yeah. might just get a um, kind of reference point. But but, but I mean, if we stand with Israel, that's exactly. where the blessing comes. Exactly. I'll bless those of us. Uh, and, and which we've got less than eight minutes of, of the program, so it's gone very very quickly. Uh, and which makes me think, as, as a broadcast journalist, and, and uh, you know, covering Israel and the Middle East week in week out. Um, I, I'm watching what happens in Israel on a kind of daily basis. What I've noticed more than anything else is the kind of fulfillment of the scriptures of, of, of Genesis 12, 1 to 3, mm. uh, where God talks to Abraham and says, I will bless those mm. who bless you and I will curse those who curse you. Uh, because the issue of Israel and how nations and governments treat Israel will be determined whether they receive a blessing or a curse. And it's the same, and this is why I speak up so much against anti-Semitism and Jew hatred, primarily because it, firstly it's wrong mm. and it's evil and it needs to be confronted, considering everything the Jewish community in Israel have given us, but also because we don't want to see the destruction of our society. And we know that when society uh, and people like Jeremy Corbyn, who became a conduit, for that spirit of Jew mm. hatred, it brings destruction. It brings devastation. Uh, and we've seen with, with ideologies like Nazism or extreme Islamic militancy or, or un various other political ideologies. If, if anti-Semitism or Jew hatred is at the center, then it means that, that the Jewish community is under attack, but also means our whole entire Western civilization is under attack. So if we want to, uh, defend our democratic values, we want to defend our liberties, our freedoms, then our response is to defend Israel and the Jewish people. Uh, what are your thoughts on that one? Absolutely, I agree with you completely mm. that um, the world survives on Western civilization. With, without Western civilization, the world would just decay. It would go back into darkness. And we see that if you travel around the world. If you look what's happened to Iran, Persia, Iran, since 1979, a wealthy, prosperous, beautiful country, mm. and what's happened to it because of an enforced submission of the people 
to do the will of a dictator, whether, uh, whatever the dictator is, whether it's a religious dictator or a secular dictator, it remains the same. So we, we, we as human beings and the, the ability to feed people, to, to do all the things that the people who fight against us mm. call their own, the, the morality that they talk about in feeding the poor and looking after communities, and they use words like society and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, if, if any of those are to be fulfilled, then we, the only hope is to the survival of Western civilization. And Western civilization is a Judeo-Christian ethic that uh, has been through reformations and realized that in order to survive, you need to build, you need to grow, mm. um, and you need to love each other. You need to try and, we won't eradicate hate, but we need to try and show people the, the, the true meaning of hatred. And we see it in, in the threats that surround Israel. I mean, if you think of Israel um, as an individual Jew, I, I feel it because that's how I feel everything coming around me. If you think of Israel, a little pinpoint mm -hmm. in the middle of, of a huge sea of enemies. Um, and yet it seems to have that, that um, dare I say, nuclear strength to survive. Um, and we will. We will not be eradicated because it's the end of the world if we're eradicated. Mm. Absolutely. Uh, Alice, we're down to the last uh, four minutes, so mm. we need to kind of sum up really. So uh, taking everything that we, we put on the table today, and, and um, there's been a lot, and uh, don't usually go through this kind of uh, discussions mm. on the Middle East report, but I think it's good to have this now and again, um, is that we Christians need to mobilise, don't we? in terms of getting more active uh, for Israel and the Jewish people, for, um, for campaigning more, for pouring on more events. Now's the time not to go into a retreat. Um, since you're on the front line of pro-Israel ministries, what do you think needs to be done in order to, to really show the Jewish people that they're not alone and really stand up for the truth that Israel represents and the truth of what the Jewish people represents as well? I think it's so, so important that we show the Jewish people we mean what we say because sometimes it's easy to be platitudes and, and slogans but we need to be standing with them and assuring them uh, it's not going to happen again in our watch in, our, in this nation as has happened in the past. I mean I, I was reminded actually as you were talking about something that uh, Benjamin Netanyahu said not so long ago. Uh, he said you know talking about the greatness of this this land of Israel he said you know we something like, uh, not, may not be 100% accurate, but something like 0.0.1% of the world population is, is, is Jewish. Probably even less than that. Maybe even less. Uh, but yeah. they are still now rated the eighth most powerful nation in the world. Now that's a miracle. <laughs> that can only be the hand of God. So, you know, how important it is for us as a nation and pray for our nation and our new government, whoever it may be, to stand even closer with Israel. Because you quoted that wonderful scripture uh, from Genesis uh, 12 verses 1 to 3, you know. He, he, he keeps his word. God is a covenant keeping God. He has made a covenant with Israel. He talked about scattering them. He talked about gathering them in. They, they were scattered because of disobedience. They gathered in because because of his name's sake, according to Ezekiel 36. He does it for his name's sake. And he's blessed them. I mean, you know, if you ever want to see a, a nation uh, focus on, on success in the nation, look at Israel and, and stand with Israel. Let our government stand with Israel. I, my heart is that I know what God's going to do for Israel. He, he's going to fight the battles as he, for, if for Israel when, when nations come against him. I want our nation to be part of the ones who are not judged uh, because of what we've done for, for wrong for Israel, but be be, be con con commended for standing with Israel. So I really, I, I, I love being alongside Sharon because she, she gets me going as well. Uh, but, you know, I just want to get you guys going or watching on, on, on the screens, you know, stand for Israel, encourage, go and speak to your MPs. You know, I remember that Daniel Taub was the ambassador saying, you know, go and talk to people, go and talk to the media because they need to hear the truth of Israel. We who have been in Israel, we hear the lies about what's going on in Israel. Speak the truth, challenge them to give some proof of what they're saying and, and we can prove what we're saying. So, Definitely. 
keep confronting. So Alistair and um, also to Sharon, thank you so much for being my guest on this uh, kind of different uh, format <laughs> of the Middle East port, more of a kind of round discussion on some of the issues and challenges facing our communities, both the Jewish community, the pro-Israel Christian community and together with Israel. And the only way we can fight the battles is fighting them together, uh, having your back mm -hmm. and uh, you having our back. So uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you guys on the programme and I want to thank you for watching the programme at home. And I do think that this has been an important and significant programme and as Christians we need to step up our level of support and activity for the Jewish people. Now is not the time to go and retreat, but we actually need to encourage, we need to strengthen and empower the Jewish community by showing them how much we love them. Let's put on more events, let's put on more events to honour Israel, more prayer meetings to pray for Israel and the Jewish people and to stand with them. So thank you for watching this week's Middle East Report.